All right, welcome to week 34 again. Uh, we've got a bunch of folks here. We've got Wani, Larry, Kurt, Dave, and Charles. And we'll have a bunch of more stragglers joining in later. All right, cool. So uh, this is the second to last session for the month of August. I hope it's been a fun uh, month so far and uh, it's definitely been a volatile earnings season. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, check out what fun tidbits we have for you this week. Uh, so we'll run our usual poll on the S&P 500. We'll look at American Association of Individual Investor Sentiment data. Um, we're just talking about uh, how the past Saturday session went uh, for our monthly meeting. And then I got a bunch of fun idiots for the week for you. Um, you probably heard about Mike Lynch's uh, very suspicious death in um, the Mediterranean and his business partner who also died of a car, tra oh, sorry, a car crash on the same day. Uh, very suspicious, but uh, we'll we'll dub him idiot of the week uh, for starters, and we'll also look at the darker rabbit holes and where those paths might lead. And then besides that, we have a bunch of um, trading idiots of the week that we'll take a look at, courtesy of Wall Street Bets, and we have all manners and natures of idiocy. So we'll take a look, and. Uh, we'll take a look at our uh, index overview and look at uh, all the big uh, names and look at the uh, the VIX, of course. And then we'll take a look at CNN's Fear and Greed Index. And we're a big fan of the, whatchamacallit, the Heinenberg Omen there and uh, then the McKellen's uh, Index for Market Breath. So we'll take a look in just a bit. We'll look at Jeffrey Hirsch's uh, um, team with the Stock Traders Almanac and see how that's shaping up for August September and October. Oh wait, wait, did I did I skip a month? I did skip a month. Oh wow. <laughs> I was reading November last week and nobody said anything. <laughs> no one's paying attention. <laughs> okay. Uh we'll fix this in just a bit. All right. Uh looks like we jump forward there. All right. Uh this is slightly old information. Let's get rid of this. Uh we got a couple uh, earnings highlights to go over. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see what else is left for today. Um, Workday, Ross, Intuit, Bill.com, and okay, that's about it. A little sleepy for the rest of the week. Yeah, but we'll see um, uh, the overall trend for the last couple of days, and then we have a deeper dive into Macy's and. Um, overall, we're seeing a lot more political jargon inserted into I'm conference kind of calls. Off there, Warren. I might want to take your video off. Oh, thank you, sir. All right. Hopefully. Yeah, uh, all right. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. So, yeah, we'll take a look at um, the rise of the political jargon inserted into earnings calls. I guess uh, that's the flavor of the month. All right. And then we'll take a look at what our counterparty is trading with swaggy stocks. And shifting to the rest of the news cycle, on the meta and econ side, we have uh, PMI data. And of course, that is a very bullish indicator here with the eight-month lows. So uh, wonderful for U.S. manufacturing, of course. Uh, we'll take a look at uh, lows, also um, uh, forward-looking uh, uh, guidance and outlook figures. And uh, it parallels... Uh, the same thing that Home Depot said last week, which is the U.S. consumer is tapped out. So we'll take a look at that. And then uh, I found an interesting mention here on Zero Hedge. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. Is this the SAM rule? SAM? SAM? Uh, but yeah, it's related to uh, unemployment and uh, interesting uh, potential forward leading indicator. So we'll take a look at that. And then I pulled up some historical data so we could compare that against uh, the current trend. And here's our existing black swan list uh, with its many, many, many potential uh, ducklings, I guess. And then we have our theaters of war. And um, uh, I think that's up to date now. OK. And we have our currency news. Let's see. Uh, we'll talk crypto for a second and look at a potential short squeeze scenario. And on, I, I'm not sure if it's positive or not, but uh, the Dubai court has recognized crypto as a valid salary payment. So um, hopefully this means uh, the Indian slaves in Dubai finally get paid. But yeah, we'll 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 leave that to the Wahhabi school of Islam to deal with. 
All right, shifting to, to domestic news, we will take a look at the predicted uh, stats and see how that's shaping up uh, against uh, our last couple of screenshots here. And yeah, uh, lots of uh, hilarious things um, at the DNC. Uh, most notably, uh, famed cultural anthropologist Lil John was performing there. <laughs> Uh, if you don't know who this is, this is a, a hip hop icon, uh, more from like 10 to 15 years ago, like more my high school and college era. Uh, there were few hip hop artists bigger than this guy. Uh, but yeah, he performed at the DNC. <laughs> uh, just really funny to me. Um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, so good times there. And then... Um, it well, uh, looks like uh, Kamala has announced her proposed cabinet, which effectively proves that this would be Obama's fourth term uh, indirectly. And he lives two blocks down the street from 1600 Pennsylvania for a reason. So clearly it's not uh, Joe running the show. Um, but yeah, um, a, a very traditional Obama cabinet. And then uh, Harris wants to... Um, uh, raise the corporate tax rate to 28%, and that's going to do wonders for uh, U.S. interests, of course. And she's talking about a unrealized tax gain um, proposal, which would uh, wipe out home ownership overnight. So what most folks aren't seeing here is what happens is real estate is getting inflated, right, due to the massive money printing. So you have artificial value creation, and then you get a tax on the unrealized gains, and then you're homeless. And then um, uh, Blackstone buys up your house and then rents it out to illegals and then charges you for it. <laughs> so yeah, this is not gonna work out very well. So uh, yeah, all right. Uh, and then um, Kamala also wants to uh, just outright replace us. So uh, I mean, she could just say like, I hate white people and people who pay taxes, but she won't, but we'll say it for her. <laughs> it's okay. All right. Uh, and on more positive news, uh, Ford is ditching the electric SUV. So um, we'll take a look at that. And uh, I believe there was, I forgot which police agency is doing the same. thought I had that here. Okay. That's okay. Um, and then last week, we talked about Ozempic and how one in 20 people have stomach paralysis, where basically you can't digest anything in your stomach cavity. And it turns in, it makes a kidney stone look like nothing. So you'll get a stomach stone, as it were. And one in yeah. 20 people. Oh, 20. Yeah, one in 20. And then on the plus side, 5%. you also, yeah, you on this, on this side, you also get suicide ideation. <laughs> Something about not eating makes your body want, want, want to kill, want, want, want to kill itself. <laughs> so uh, very positive news there. Uh, and then we always love demographic data. So here's here's some fun stuff on violent crime rates. So we'll take a look at that. And uh, definitely it's not Chicago. <laughs> and then shifting to more optimistic real estate news, uh, we have existing home sales. It's the weakest since 2010, record low affordability. And this upcoming sugar high of the September rate cut is going to do diddly squat. But um, hope is springing eternally here. And then on the commercial uh, debacle side, uh, we're seeing um, more, more uh, dense metro still see uh, drastic cuts in commercial real estate valuations. And on the back end, this is going to wipe out so many regional banks. So uh, we should maybe take a look at KRE, our regional bank ETF, um, in just a bit. Cool. And then uh, with uh, Gruesome Newsome, no end to... Uh, the destruction of the middle class in California, we want to now give illegal aliens, uh, or let's just call them criminals, but uh, yeah, well, we want to give criminals zero down, no payment home loans. So that's always bullish for real estate. And again, uh, one of the unspoken benefits of mass illegal immigration uh, is uh, uh, real estate um, prices. It's, it's, for, it's, for, it's for the real estate sector in general because it crowds out the bottom and people have to find a place to sleep. So uh, uh, you're, 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 you're forcing higher occupancy rates um, by crowding out the bottom. 
Okay, shifting to uh, more tech-oriented news, let's take a look at uh, what's been cooking. Oh, uh, we talked about this last week. Uh, Palo Alto caught a um, uh, a party foul with uh, this um, trade show expo setup, and uh, people thought this was uh, a little bit uh, sexist. And then CEO, what's his name, uh, Aurora, issued a, uh, an apology. And then, <laughs> out of curiosity, I I was uh, I was trading Palo Alto Networks anyway, and I started looking up their uh, their their jobs. And you know what I found? <laughs> On the market department, senior manager, crisis communications and reputation <laughs> management. <laughs> This role just opened up, so your full-time job <laughs> will be to wipe the ass of the CEO when he does stupid-ass things like this. <laughs> that, 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 that just deserves a downgrade by itself. <laughs> oh, there you go. Real-time market analytics. So, yes. Uh, maybe the Indians in the C-suite don't know what they're doing. <laughs> uh, all right. So that's uh, the first article of tech news. All right. Number two, uh, we're seeing um, some supply crunch issues on the chip side. So uh, a lot of semiconductor interest here. So we'll take a look at this uh, in just a bit. And then, um, yeah, again, with uh, Mr. Lynch's questionable... Um, uh, Def, uh, that I, I looked up the uh, the actual super yacht. It's really big, and it has a full time crew of ten. And for some reason, all the hatches were open, um, and uh, they're water they're made watertight for a reason. And you don't leave everything open unless you know you're planning something sinister. So we'll take a look in just a bit. All right. Uh, shifting to uh, labor news, uh, both domestically and internationally, we'll take a look at the late, latest uh, white collar layoff data. But yes, uh, jobless claims are still at 33 month highs. And uh, to the Great White North, um, looks like Canadian Freight Rail has shut down as well. And uh, uh, there is a strike. Uh, so uh, Castro Jr. has to deal with that. And then uh, interesting faux pas from the Biden's Commerce Secretary and the uh, Bureau of Labor. Um, uh, funny, it's a former governor of Rhode Island, Miss uh, Mrs. Uh, Gina Raimondo. Um, and uh, uh, if you guys remember, forty-year-old virgin. The alternate pronunciation of Gina is Gina. <laughs> So you could you could sort of call her Governor Gina right here, but yeah, uh, but yeah. Anyway, she's not familiar with uh, uh, the latest unemployment stats, so it's kind of funny. But uh, we'll take a look at that. And yes, we did have a massive um, uh, jobs revision, which which is clearly moving the goalpost like there's no tomorrow. But uh, um, all news is good news because it brings about a September rate cut. I guess. Okay. Uh, fun stuff. Shifting to more international news. Uh, it's been a kinetic field uh, last two weeks. And Russia is now uh, also calling out a foul play and demanding a U.S. envoy to talk about the large amount of American mercenaries that were captured and a um, news crew as well. So uh, uh, with... Um, Ukraine with a massive conscription shortage, uh, this new offensive, yeah, it does raises a lot of questions. And the amount of uh, U.S. and NATO stormed source armament also implies skilled labor behind it. So obviously, obviously it's not the the, the poor kids uh, that are just grabbed off the street that are being trained to drive M1 Abram tanks and whatnot. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we'll look at more uh, military hardware that's been showing up there. And uh, and uh, um, at least Putin is playing this fairly patiently. Um, he 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 has a uh, at least the Russian bear is uh, uh, pretty uh, not passive, but uh, I guess a little a little bit more tactical. Uh, 
and uh, it seems like with the with the poop, with the troops uh, focusing on the curse region, uh, Donbass defense has been um, pulled back ex extensively, and still Ukrainian death counts is still about two thousand per day, and uh, the Russians are still gobbling up territory at ten kilometers a day around the curse region. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so yes, the Russian bear rolls on. And on more optimistic news, monkeypox uh, looks like there will not be a lockdown, at least not just yet, but we'll see how the UN and the WHO are going to conspire to ruin this uh, altogether for us. Um, but yeah, we'll take a look at that. And then shifting to continue. It's politically correct. Yeah, it's of course. MPOX. MPOX. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> we don't want to insult monkeys. All right. Uh, shifting to optimistic news in the UK, uh, looks like uh, power bills are blowing up, and um, I guess they need more of that uh, liquefied uh, 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 natural gas from uh, from uh, the the unspeakable entity in the east. But yeah, uh, they probably need to do something about that. And uh, looks like uh, the the I guess Islamic uh, is how do I phrase it correctly. The the uh, the anti anti Islamophobia riots uh, have transitioned to um, a more centralized government response, but uh, we'll take a look at that. Okay, uh, what else? Um, as another proxy indicator of the middle class, uh, diamonds are plummeting in terms of demand, and uh, everyone's suffering from Antwerp to. Um, uh, all of the diamond producing regions as well. All right. And then uh, doing a quick, uh, a brief uh, uh, look into um, international demographics, we'll take a look at green card use by origin. Cool. And then oil and commodity news, uh, uranium's uh, beginning to pick up slightly. And uh, gold and silver news. Uh, Gold is uh 2480 at the moment, but it did set uh, a bunch of uh, all-time high records since we last met. I think it peaked at uh 2515 or something. Uh silver's at 29. So basically the new floor price effectively is 2500 for gold, 30 bucks for silver, and then platinum and palladium is trying to figure this out at about a thousand. And I forgot what rhodium is. Um no one no one really trades that. Okay. And then lots of fun China news. Very optimistic, of course. Um, they're talking COVID there. And uh, uh, similar to Larry's point, this is going to be used for uh, political reasons to quell civil unrest. And um, that's been flaming up big time there. So um, we'll take a look at the current amount of strikes, wage cuts, and all kinds of shenanigans. And there was a uh, Filipino mayor that ran away last month and has disappeared and is hiding in apparently Indonesia. And it seems like she was a Chinese spy. So uh, we'll take a look at that. Uh, Miss Alice Guo. Uh, she is exceptionally light-skinned for a Filipino person. So uh, um, yeah, they, the Filipinos do not really look like this. Uh, not, well, at least not the average one. Okay, uh, but we'll take a look at that. And then um, got some more COVID data there and we'll talk tariffs and Teslas and what China's future might look like. And um, uh, ironically, we'll look to Japan for that. All right, and Venezuela. All right, cool. So lots of fun things to talk about. Uh, let's jump back to the top and let's kick off with our poll. And I would love to know where you guys think the S&P 500 will go by our next meeting next Thursday. So you should see our poll on your screen now. And Charles brings up a good point. Um, Ozempic, the active ingredients, the glucagon's uh, synthetic is um, sourced from the Gila monster. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you brought this up. Uh, I don't think most folks know what this is. And uh, yeah, so this is what it is. It's from Sonora. 
Uh, it's a venomous lizard. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's share our results here. Okay, let's check this out. All right, so it looks like we got forty percent bullish, forty percent sideways, and twenty percent thinking bearish. All right, so it looks like most of us are gearing up for that uh, rate cut coming out in about a month. And uh, before we look at our next thing, uh, just just quick tidbit about um, reptiles in general. Um, as mammals, we're we're we're, we're ingrained to fear uh, reptiles for venomous and poisonous reasons. And uh, Jordan Pearson talked 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 about this before. Um, uh, his daughter kept reptiles in her room, and for some reason, she didn't know why uh, she was getting nightmares all the time. And it's because reptiles their smell and pheromones trigger a fear response in mammals so if you find yourself with um, non-stop nightmares just move your reptile setup to a different room and, and that will instantly disappear so um the suicide ideation uh related to ozempic is not as mysterious as, as 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 you think there's just a natural mammal reaction to venomous reptiles all right cool a little zoology moment for uh, the week. And uh, yeah, with that, let's go to our sentiment data. And let's compare and contrast here. All right, so we're seeing more pronounced optimism. 51.6% from our individual investors, sorry, the American Association of Indiv uh, in, uh, of Individual Investors here these folks love to buy and hold for darn near forever. But yeah, so we're seeing a big chunk in bullish, a smaller, uh, I guess, uh, neutral camp and a reduced bearish clump. So yeah, there is more optimism in the markets. Excellent day. Eh? All right. And uh, is uh, Saturday session uploaded yet? Do we know that? Yeah, I'm sure it's there. It's there? Okay, great. I got some homework. Oh, welcome, Gordon. Let me drop the session notes for you. And welcome, Pla. All right, cool. Let's look at the idiot of the week. Um, yeah, as we mentioned, uh, Mike Lynch, uh, I think he faked his death. Um, it's awfully convenient. And... Um, uh, we'll take a look in our in our bigger article has a better has has the video, but yeah. Okay, let's let's go to our first trading idiot of the week though, fresh from Wall Street Bets. And they changed their uh their their cover banner here, so this is fun. We got Jansen Wong here signing boobs, um, Zuckerberg. Uh, what is this? Um. Kathy Woods, Elon, and Papa Powell, right? So, yeah, <laughs> good times. All right, let's take a look at this idiot. Uh, no year, Mofo seven eight zero one. All right, so he has seventy dollars now, or seventy one if you round up. And uh, which broker is this? I can't tell. Is this Robinhood? No, I think it's something else. But anyway, uh, his account has imploded. So. At his peak, he was uh, year to date uh, almost nine hundred thousand. Wow, he melted down nine hundred thousand to seventy one dollars. That is crazy. Wow. How? How did he do it? Uh, let's see. He's um, he's milk and spy. And how? <laughs> he's he's trying to call. Spy. He's trying to call moves on spy with nine hundred thousand dollars. He could have run the wheel. He oh could have my. sold short-term credit spreads, um, but no, he wanted to 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 call out the the each 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 like each each iteration of of, of the ocean waves instead. Uh, should have bought. I deserved this for being a bear, and he was bearish. <laughs> uh, poor guy. But yes, wow. you, you turned a million bucks into one bag of food. I feed my dog monthly. Wow! <laughs> oh my god! Oh wow! Wow! That is, 
that is bad. <laughs> this guy is on suicide watch. <laughs> he 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 probably have um a lot left maybe somewhere else. This is probably just his play money. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's a, that's a I, lot of money to play with. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a that, that's a decade or two's worth of earnings. Um, let's see what else he's posted, just out of curiosity. Um, I, I'm interested to see. Yeah, like like you, Wani, I'd like to know what kind of person is this. Oh no, he's just a degenerate gambler. Look at this guy. Um, yeah, end of day spy calls. How old is he? How old? The way he types, younger than me. Yeah. <laughs> so How does in the he 30s, get? Let us assume. Yeah. Probably How does 30s. he get that, that much money? Uh, okay, let's question. say he's thirty-five. How did he? I don't know. Inheritance that much money to okay inheritance maybe maybe inheritance tech. Um, I don't know. These are all good questions. Uh, he's he's not very smart, but yeah. Uh, he's not tech savvy either. Oh, I don't know. This this uh whatever. A uh, a fool and his money is soon parted. So clearly that applies to this guy. Okay, next loser. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, and um, oh, there's a there's a oh, I I, I gotta back up. The ultimate loser. The ultimate ultimate loser. This guy who bought a cyber truck. <laughs> I'm not sure you guys saw it. Um, all right. So this this is a listing off Carfax. Uh, $135,000 in Bluffdale, Utah. Oh my gosh, he's Mormon. <laughs> Poor Ryan. Going through divorce, selling brand new cyber beast, only owned for two weeks. This privately owned beauty is the lowest priced beast in Utah, owned outright in Bluffdale. <laughs> oh my gosh the mormon divorce rate is horrific people don't That's talk about this why he got his divorce <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he paid this off of cash it's like no <laughs> he was hey was warren that... you were saying that you you were saying you were saying that mormon's divorce rate is incredible it's really high uh yes. Uh I, I've worked in two Mormon companies and I've seen a lot of bullshit. So uh let, I can elaborate briefly. Um but yeah, yeah, uh Mormons are complicated. And again, the sister wives thing is only in the her the hereditary line, which is a very small minority, um, and doesn't apply for the most part. Um but yeah, uh do we have any Mormons here that would be offended? Uh not really. Okay. Um actually, me... yes. But Dave? I'm not offended at anything. Okay. Uh, <laughs> You're not Mormon, right, Dave? Mom um, is. Oh, your mom? Oh, okay. In theory, I am. Mormons are some yeah. of the nicest people uh, in the world, but <laughs> they, they can also be really weird, too, because um, it, it's just a slightly bizarre incentive structure um, in the near term and in the afterlife. Like, it, it's complicated. Um Christians will say this is clearly a cult. Um, I would say this cult is really well armed, so I wouldn't talk too much shit. But uh, yeah, it's just complicated. So yeah, and then they ban um, uh, substances or any controlled stuff, any active psychoactive substances, even caffeine. And they have weird workarounds around not losing your virginity called soaking and anal sex and oral sex with the young, um, blah, blah, blah. And if you kind of look deeper into the missionary program for the young men between the ages of uh, 18 and 22, they have to work, you know, on a mission trip for two years. And they look like, um, uh, you know, short sleeve kids with black ties on a bicycle. Um, you know, uh, I think this is slowed down in the post COVID world, but a lot of folks get their doors knocked on by Mormon missionaries. But the darker reason for Mormon missionary work uh, is so that the that church elders can marry the women. 18-year-old uh, women kept at home, 
18 year old men, you know, shipped off to Guam. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's an interesting business model. <laughs> um, and then South Park does a lot of parodies on these guys. So, uh, but yeah, uh, okay. So that's that that's that that's Utah for you, and uh, it, it's a little complicated, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and again, they don't play nice with other Christian groups anyway. It's it's a bizarre interaction. Um, and then every other Mormon family that I that I knew had like a catastrophic medical emergency with 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 the children, like quadriplegic, Down syndrome, autism. Um, you know, and then that that's why other Christians call them, you know, like this cult is cursed in a big way. And you look at them genetically and it doesn't make sense. Like this is all German Irish stock, you know, hybrid vigor galore. This just doesn't make sense. But uh I've just seen a lot of problems with that. So but yeah, every Mormon family, you know, a lot of you know, stock in their pantry, guns, generators, medical supplies, like they are prepared for the end for the end times better than anybody else as a collective group. Um I think I've talked about it before. There's an LDS uh, prepper manual that a bunch of my like a bunch of my friends have. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Uh, it's like it's like how to can food, um, how to how to do power. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. It's just it, it it's a free PDF. Oh yeah, I'll just paste in the chat. It's kind of incredible. Um. So yeah. Uh. Uh, again, you know, these guys, you know, you can talk a lot of shit, but at the end of the day, they're, they're ready for hell on earth, which is kind of impressive. So this is just food prep and weapons, but yeah, water treatment, waste disposal. Um, so yeah. So I, I'm going to fight for them on this one. They, they were thrown out of cities and states for like 30 years. So, uh, being tarred and feathered or, you know, whatever. <clears throat> kind of leads you to want food and be able yeah. to survive if the world's against you. Yeah. Uh, what other interesting tidbits? Um, uh, like, I like to read the ex-Mormon forums. Um, they're fascinating. They, they, they come out of... Uh, God, what's that? I just blanked out. Um, the big school, they come out of that. Very BYU. Yeah, BYU. Arrogant. I mean, like, they, you think Eric... It comes out of uh, the Ivy Leagues. They, it's worse. BYU, yeah, BYU, and then and then there's BYU Hawaii, the which is Asian. Where everybody, all the women think they should be rich, and they really are. Um, yeah, yeah, the, all the same. It, it is dangerous. Yeah, and then like young Mormon wives, you know, have lots of kids, do multi level marketing for skincare, and then promptly rip their husbands a new asshole around age thirty five to forty uh it's just it's like clockwork um so yeah i and then you, there's the 10 percent tithing which is which is which is um verified with your tax returns but they also give you there's unemployment benefits and substantial private charity within the church too so it's a complicated society that the mormons have built um and uh joseph smith uh, this is probably an insight you've never heard of, but did you know that the Mormons are closely, or the founding Mormons were uh, were Freemasons? Here we go. Yeah, Joseph Smith, Freemasonry. Because uh, one time I, I, I DJed for uh, this Mormon VP. He was working at, a, at an Indian company, which is kind of interesting. And he was tripping balls over my uh, Masonic ring. And then he told me all about Joseph Smith and how he was a Mormon. Sorry, sorry, he was a Freemason. And uh, and then I was like, then I looked it up and it was true. And um, but yeah, uh, Freemasonry can be used for the wrong purposes because uh, you build up the social infrastructure for substantial secrecy. Like this is reasons why the Templar's letter of credit was honored from you know the UK British Isles to Jerusalem. And you can only do that because you had bulletproof, you know, integrity or um, uh, and and it's connected to a ledger. So that can be misused um, for, say, creating a cult. <laughs> OK, uh, enough of Mormonism and zoology, but yeah. And then also the men can have uh, many wives, right? 
that is only for the hereditary line. It, it, it doesn't apply to 99% of Mormons. That, 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 uh, oh. the, the one that marries multiple wives is, uh, is, uh, is, 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 they're the Shia Mormons of, the, of their faith. And they're a tiny minority, statistically insignificant. But oh. it makes great PR. And people talk about it to death. But oh. if you're if you're a smart man, you do not want a bunch of wives under the same roof. <laughs> you want them separated. Well, well, well first Otherwise, you have to have a lot of money. Uh, that that that, uh, that that is true. You do need money. Yeah, that, 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 that's yeah. Okay, that's so why we... men men in Asia can have so many wives because only the rich men can do that. Uh, yes, yes. All right. Uh, speaking of money, uh, let's look at loser number two. Uh, all right. Let's let's this guy. This guy says, uh, "Made and lost seven hundred thousand in three weeks. Don't ask me anything." Wow. All right. Let's see what he <laughs> traded. Um, wow. Uh, so he is he is raw dogging the the ES futures. Um, I give up. Fuck this market and fuck me. Futures sort position. <laughs> Wow, negative 60 contracts. Wow, I'm Un underwater. Wow. Uh, it's an election year and he's trying to short the S&P 500 in going out into September. Wow, like where, why do you have so much money? How can you be this stupid? And trading on your phone. <laughs> All right, um, let's see. Uh, the market didn't fuck you. Thinking you were smart enough to succeed at futures trading fucked you. <laughs> oh, that, that's true. We'll go up of that. <laughs> okay. Clearly, this guy has never heard of paper trading. All right. Uh, all right. Number three, <laughs> loser of the week. Oh, welcome, Linda. Uh, let's drop the session notes for you. Thanks. Hello, guys. Welcome, Hello. welcome. Hello. <clears throat> all right. Uh, let's see. This guy says, bring on the suicide helpline numbers. And this is Riley, right? Is this O'Reilly? Uh, let me double check. <laughs> Uh, O'Reilly stock. I believe this is it. Uh, no, uh, Riley is B. Riley Financial. This has nothing to do with what he wants. Okay. Okay, this is not auto parts. This is uh, this dumb penny stock thing. What the hell is this? And it's losing money like crazy and a 52-week low practically. 30% yield. Well, that's that's for a reason. But But this guy didn't get the memo. All right, let's see what this idiot did. So this guy was probably, um, oh yeah, we don't talk about this a lot, but there's a large cohort of investors and traders that purely trade for dividends at the at the at the risk of ignoring everything else, like principal market cap and, and stuff like that. But um, uh, I guess this is one of them. So yeah, this guy has what twenty four thousand shares, blah blah blah, cost basis of about what is this? over nine bucks and he lost how much money? Three quarters of a million dollars and he lost uh, a third of that. No, lost two thirds of that. Holy shit. But he got that 30% yield, right? <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Um, let's see, least favorite, uh, yeah. Please hang yourself and whip yourself. The Intel guy making fun of you is the best. Oh, oh my gosh, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. Wow. Different losers are capping on each other. This is awesome. <laughs> All right, so yeah, this is a dividend trader that got wiped out and has never heard of the word protective put in his life. Even Mark Cuban knows what the protective put is. And this guy didn't. So pretty sad. Uh, let's see if we can find out more about this loser. Um, is it a girl? Uh, LGBT girl or something? Let's see. Uh, da -da. Okay, this person likes to game. Okay, that's not good. League of Legends fan. Um, mostly stock oriented. Okay. Uh, looks like this person is really married to the Riley stock for some reason. 
um, and is in the East Coast, plays a lot of video games. Interesting. Uh, and is in Maryland. Okay. All right. So that's uh, that, that moron. All right. Uh, hope you feel better about yourself. Uh, next idiots of the week. And don't forget, this is our counterparty. When we sell premium, this is the other side. It's great. And last week, we talked about the ASTS uh, blow up. You know, that was on Thursday. It was 50% up. And uh, looks like some folks were chasing old news and got caught. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at uh, ASTS and see how they're performing. Okay, so it looks like the top top was uh, 38, uh, but it looks like it's over for sure. Or at least uh, it's forming a nice uh, early kind of dead cat bounce pattern. But yeah, so that's the strikes. Let's go back and see what happened to this guy. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Short-term calls that expire tomorrow. Um, am I reading this right? He bought the 100 strike? Really? What? Huh? 40, 40, sorry. This is the 40 strike? 40 call, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Okay, so you bought the 40 calls. And what? since it, 100 contracts? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what this notation is, but uh, you got the 40 strike at least. Okay. Uh, what else? Yeah, yeah, just chasing old news and thought the 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 the, the rocket ship would continue. So uh, clearly, there's going to be uh, no funds for the designated the designated beneficiary here. Okay, so yeah. All right, so this is a, a space space satellite idiot here. All right, last loser of the week. All right, this is from two days ago. Uh, this person cooked up, uh, went bye-bye with uh, $57,000. So that's what, 100 grand on W-2 income or maybe 90? There's 156 left. And uh, I thought there was, a, what was the moves again? Uh, I thought he posted it. Where's his moves? Uh it was okay sorry i thought the, maybe i just, maybe i posted the wrong one okay we'll skip this one uh because this doesn't post positions sorry about that all right we'll remove that okay cool let's get back to the rest of uh, the market but yeah uh so hope you feel, so hopefully this makes you feel better about your trades because there's lots of losers out there like you like remember you, you, you could be the proud owner of a paid off cyber truck that's getting divorced <laughs> oh <laughs> This will show up in the separation agreement in in, in, in court. <laughs> this guy's gonna have to split the uh, the the full purchase price because she's probably not gonna want uh, the remnant value. Uh, oh my gosh, this is this is like the forensic ac accountants and attorneys are gonna have a field day with this. Wow! So this paid off asset is so underwater, and we could probably find. Um, uh, what you what you will call it? Uh, uh, sorry. Cyber trucks have broken these six figure amounts. Uh, they're being sold for under a hundred thousand dollars now. Um, uh, we'll skip this, but yeah, we're a little short on time, but uh, yeah. Okay, we'll circle back to that. Okay, cool. Uh, so with that, let's go to uh the big charts and talk indexes. And what did Flop post here? Wait till Robin Hood starts offering futures soon. Wow. I mean, I've been paper trading the ES and it's been nice to sell credit spreads that run through the night. Um, so see, you can do it the diligent way with paper trading. Uh, but yeah, looks like uh, this will be fun.
<laughs> okay. All right, let's get back to our thinkorswim and let's start with our S&P 500, the biggest 500 companies of the US economy. And we'll start with the different tiers of the product. And we'll start with the future side, of course, the supposed smart money. And it looks like Swab uh, needs a beating yet again. Come on, Swab. All right, looks like the market has continued to uh, drift further down. Oh, that is a beautiful dead cat's bounce pattern. Look at that technical analysis. That is a beautiful pattern. Nice suckers rally, and it's hitting person's pivots perfectly. Wow. Awesome. All right. So with that, let's look under the hood. And it looks like momentum is uh, flat at the zero. So uh, the market isn't sure what to expect. And everyone is desperately waiting for cheaper money in September. But that's going to be temporary. And it's just a sugar high. But um, we still need it, I guess. All right. So put call ratio. It's a normal trading day. Fair value is 1.4. Contract sizes are a little bit low. But it seems uh, OK for today. Uh, let's see, the sizzle numbers are still broken. Thanks a lot, Swab. They're never going to fix this. Um, but yeah, let's go down to the second tier of smart money with uh, the big boy option contracts of SPX. And if you recall, one of our trading idiots of the week, that guy was what? Rolling with uh, some several hundred thousand dollars and only playing spy over SPX. So just on that thing alone, you can tell that he's a novice because you know, he's overpaying his commissions and not trading SPX. But yeah, retail is for suckers. And uh, our job is to not be a sucker. If you don't know who the sucker is at the poker table, it's you. All right. Come on, SPX. Come on. Come on. All right. Come on. Option analytics. Come on, buddy. Come on. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, double clicked. All right. Come on. I think it was like a 1.3. Okay. 1.2. All right. So normal trading day. This uh fair fair value is about 1.3, 1.4. Um, let's look at the deltas really quick. Uh yeah, it's a nice boring day, no extremes. It's just a it's just a drawdown day. It's not, not nothing crazy. But I know a lot of the zero DTE guys probably had their strikes a little bit too close and they're screaming bloody murder now. All right, let's look at SPY. Come on. Come on, Swab. How can you be this slow? With each passing week, you get slower and slower. Okay. Oh, come on. Okay. Uh, all right. On the put call ratio, we're seeing a number under one, which is unusual. Uh, fair value is also around 1.4. So uh, I guess folks are buying the dip. Hope springs eternally for retail. And yeah, very sleepy on the bearish deltas. So yeah, people are really buying the dip. Okay. And uh, let's go to the other retail popular index with the Qs, very tech heavy. And let's see how the NASDAQ is shaping up. I'm tempted to look up the NASDAQ futures, but if Swab is this slow, like we would just skip it. Oh, come on, NASDAQ. How could you load any slower? Oh, come on. Oh, 
Sorry, guys. Oh. Come on. Let me just turn off Discord. Let's free up a little bit of RAM. Come on. Q, Q, Q. Come on, Swab. Come on. Uh, if you're thinking about upgrading your 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 uh, MacBook Pros, the M4 chip may come out this fall, so I might hold off for that. Okay, here we go. Uh, looks like we're seeing confirmation of our spy analysis, and we're seeing pronounced optimism here, and a very similar skew here on the deltas. So yeah, it looks like retail is buying the dip. And uh, yeah, people are looking forward for um, uh, a bounce upward with the rate cut and um, election mania. And let's go to the charts really quick though and look at on balance volume for the queues because uh, being good traders here, we should watch the momentum. So looking here, we are definitely above the zero line we're not as strong as uh, like uh, early July, but uh, we're getting there. So there is some pronounced optimism. But yeah, we are definitely off our July highs. And momentum is perfectly matching price action. So uh, we are seeing the trend correctly here. Okay. So that's what the queues are doing in retail. Uh, let's go to the Russell 2000, which has been... Uh, relatively popular the last couple of months. I think it's unwarranted, but uh, sure. Small caps uh, have been in favor. And come on, Swab, let's, let's look at some small cap stocks. Gosh, Swab, how can you be this slow? I think this might be a record. Definitely too many things running. <laughs> Uh, how many tabs is this? Yeah, okay. All right, Russell 2000. Uh, I, I call this affectionately the schizophrenic index because it loves to overreact over everything. But for to, for once today, it is underperforming compared to the S&P 500. So we got to give credit where credit is due. At least today, the ex-girlfriend uh, index didn't act crazy. <clears throat> all right so here's uh momentum you, know, you say bad things about it but uh if you think about it, the volatility actually is a benefit for option sellers for sure for sure um it's, it's, it's just there's, there's a lot of people who trade right because oh, of that. yeah uh i am not one of them but that's okay no. <laughs> uh s p is is good enough for me uh okay uh but yeah let's look at momentum here it it it's uh it's definitely a higher plateau than the june season here but uh it's not great and similar to the nasdaq it's not as running as hot as uh early july but yes momentum is uh, or on balance momentum here is predicting price action perfectly so very seeing high we're seeing high correlation here Okay. And let's look under the hood really quick. Let's see. That's what, 36 vol for today? Uh, okay, let's. Uh, so this is fair value is about two point three. So one point anything is very optimistic. So this is extremely bullish, uh, even with this bearish figure. So yeah, interesting. Okay, so that's a Russell for you. And uh, can we look at the diamonds without uh, our application blown up here? Come on, come on. Oh. DIA, come on. DIA, DIA.
while we're, we're gonna wait forever for this um let's see flav is talking shit here uh uh where's rob to defend linux for, for a second <laughs> uh but yes Flop says, uh, spend your money, get a Windows laptop, then, sp then spend the rest on champagne because your toss is way faster. Yeah. Wow. I, 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 I might have to do that. But, uh, oh, uh, in case you want to pair your, your champagne, uh, Whole Foods has dollar oysters on Friday. And if like it, and if you want to see the seafood guy like 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 cry tears, you can ask him to shuck it for you. <laughs> you know, prime time at 5 p.m. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's there's good stuff there. Um, uh, local stuff, uh, Eastern Seaboard stuff for a dollar an oyster. It's 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 practically given away. Um. Oh, dude, uh, that is great, Dave. Great, great picture from Dave. <laughs> the, the on fire Tesla. That's on brand. <laughs> Warranty voided. <laughs> All right, let's look at the Dow Jones for a second. Uh, this is the most optimistic index of them all. This is the kid that likes to eat uh, glue in the corner. If the numbers will load. Uh, while it's doing that, let's look at this article from Flav on Robin Hood. Oh, wait, here's Robin Hood. Mm -hmm. Advanced traders. Uh, wait, what is this? Robin Hood, Robin Hood. That might be good for competition on fees, not other brokers. Mm. And I hear they're going to do SPX too. So. That would be interesting. Um, Tradier has some competition. And tasty, no less. Excellent. Okay, cool. And uh, 120. That later. Okay, let's get back to uh, our show here. Okay, so yeah. Oh, did we look at the VIX we did, right? Okay, we'll skip that. Okay, this never loaded. Freaking swab. Um, wow. All right, we're just gonna skip this. Uh, something's wrong with swap. Okay. All right, uh, we'll see uh, the fix stuff here. Okay. All right, well, this is our next layer of analysis. If uh, CNN will play nicely with us, Let's see what the aggregate score is. Is my audio dropping? Uh, let me turn off my VPN. Can you guys still hear me? Is, is audio okay? Can you guys still hear me? Somebody should tell me to run process manager top or something. Oh, hello? Yeah, we're here. He's gone again. What? I'm here. I'm here. Oh, you're here. Okay. Uh, okay. 
All right, turn off the VPN. I, I think I think I think that should help a little bit. Okay, sorry about that. Um, all right, let's look at CNN's fear and greed index. So the aggregate score is forty eight. Uh, yesterday was fifty. A week ago was thirty three. A month ago was forty eight, and then it was forty three a year ago. So still fairly optimistic. And the lowest print we saw was 19. All right, let's take a look at the S&P. Uh, looks like we're kind of forming a nice buffer zone above the 125 moving day average here. So they're gonna check that off as greed. I would, I would, I would more say that it's complacency than greed. And then let's see, here's the Heinenberg Omen comparing 52 week highs against 52 week lows and the delta of that is still on the low side. So not a lot of high flyers overall. Uh, I guess this is like market breadth at the extremes. And looking at market breadth at the sort of median value, here we're comparing the overall number of shares rising versus falling. And that's the McKellen index. So that is a little bit on the greed side at the moment. And then we already talked about put call ratio, and this is a retarded way to look at it. So we'll skip it. Here's the VIX data. Uh, today we're at what, uh, 17, 16? Somewhere bouncing around there. And uh, historically, we were just at that recent blow up uh, that peaked at 38 for the for the uh, intraday close back on August 5th. Uh, will we have another uh, high VIX move like this? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe before November at least. All right. So that's where we are historically. And with that, let's go to the Stock Traders Almanac. And uh, I can't believe I pasted in November's uh, readout last time and no one said anything. <laughs> let's see if I can find the next one. All right, let's find October, not November. Meanwhile, it's Thursday, uh, it, Taco Thursday, or at least uh, yeah, October. There we go. You're back on November, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Here we have the correct month. Okay, perfect. All right, all right, all right. There we go. How come no one said anything? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's read August's. Um, so yeah, this if you're new to uh, the Stock Traders Almanac, uh, Jeffrey Hirsch's team puts together a lot of historical data. I guess they were the original or one of the sort of index data scientists before you know data scientists was a thing. All right, looking at the August readout historically, harvesting made August the best stock market month from 01 to 51. Now that about only 2% of labor is dedicated to farming, August is the worst Dow and second worst S&P and NASDAQ month since 1988. It is the second shortest bear in history at 45 days caused by turmoil in Russia. The currency crisis and hedge fund debacle uh, ended here in 98, blah, blah, blah. And then Saddam Hussein triggered a 10% slide in 1990. And the best Dow gains were 82, 84 as bear markets ended. Next to last S&P day is up only nine times the last 27 years. And in presidential election years, August ranks number five for the S&P, number four for the Dow, and number one for the NASDAQ. Uh, has the NASDAQ performed that well this year? Uh, Double check really quick. Well, why is nothing working? It's gremlins on your computer today. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh,
All right, Nasdaq, let's see if you were number one for August. Uh, Yahoo Finance doesn't play well. Come on. Oh, let's back up. Let's not go there. Let's try Market Watch. One month. Here we go. Uh, has this been the best NASDAQ month? Uh, started what? Four, five, nine, and we are at four, seven, five. I guess it's up. I, 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 I don't know if it's the best NASDAQ month ever. Um, there might be some better months, but yeah, it's up at least. Okay. So that's the August read, at least for the NASDAQ. Uh, let's check out September. Uh, portfolio managers back. Oh, wait, wait, quick, sorry, quick, quick reminder. Uh, so supposedly the Almanac says uh, uh, next to last day, S&P up only nine out of the last 27 years. So potentially the S&P will close poorly for the month next week. So just keep that in the back of your head. Okay, September. Portfolio managers back after Labor Day tend to clean house in September. Biggest percentage loser on the S&P, Dow and NASDAQ since 1950. Streak of four great Dow Septembers, averaging 4.2% gains. Ended in 99 with six losers in a row, averaging negative 5.9%. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Day after Labor Day, Dow is down 11 of the last 15. And S&P opened uh, strong 17 of the last 28 years, but tends to close weak due to end of quarter mutual fund portfolio restructuring. And last trading day, S&P is down 19 the past 30. And September triple witching week can be dangerous. Week after is pitiful. Excellent. And here's our uh, October almanac. Let's see. Beware October phobia from crashes in 29, 87, and 97. And back-to-back -back massacres of 78 and 79. Friday the 13th of 89 and the 2008 meltdown. <laughs> Yet, October is a bear killer and turned the tide in 13 post-World War II bear markets. First, October Dow top in 07. Uh, worst six months of the year ends with October. It is no longer the worst month. Uh, best Dow, S&P, and NASDAQ month from 93 to 07. And presidential election year, October's rank, uh, since 1950, rank number 12 for the Dow, number 12 for the S&P, and number 12 for the NASDAQ. Uh, October is a great time to buy. And big October Dow gains uh, include five years of 99 to 03 after atrocious September's. And entering the best six months earlier using MACD, blah, blah, blah. October 22 was the best Dow month by points, up 4,000 or 14%. Okay. Um, excellent. And I still don't have sector rotation data, so we'll skip that. And what is Dave saying? Um, my, my browser screw up might be due to Chromium not getting updates. Oh, that's Windows 7. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I like the idea of Windows 7. Definitely better. It has, it has some serious security issues. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, God, I don't want to get back to the Windows. Yeah, uh, yeah system at all but yeah i i would have to get what what's the standard one now 11 maybe 10 11 11, 11. Well, yeah uh, that, that's gonna that's not gonna be fun <laughs> okay. schwab doesn't support seven oh. when was that two years ago two years ago schwab stopped supporting seven at least they wouldn't support it for me log has seven I though right yeah, no issues. <laughs> I I only use it for trading, not not web browsing. So it's trading machines only. There you go. Okay. Uh, let's talk uh earnings. Um, 
let's look at Macy's. And here's a kind of a smorgasbord of uh, uh, different folks. Uh, okay. I, I wasn't using Toss. I was using their other damn platform. Think pipes. What else do they have? Uh, on the Schwab side or the Ameritrade side? On the Schwab side. They have street, uh, was it uh, Street, street Smart, Smart Edge? Edge. Yeah, yeah they I think got it's gone now. Of, they got all kinds of street smarts, but I think those are gone now. Yeah. Street Smart Edge did have a manual uh, like walk down, which is kind of cool for like pennying in and pennying out of positions. Uh, that that was really cool. Uh, okay, uh, Macy's. Uh, this is continuing our existing theme of the weekend U.S. consumer, and uh, here's some indicators from the luxury environments of, excuse me, of how bad that might look. And basically, Macy's lowered its annual outlook on sales uh, to between from uh, 22 to 22.4 billion, compared to the previous forecast of 22.9. Uh, billion. Okay. It will be a more rocky remainder of the year. This is a disappointing result for Macy's and a sharp cut to the company's forecast for sales and comp trends for the full year. Uh, so yeah, Macy's is in trouble. And this is totally in line with what Home Depot and Lowe's has said as well. And uh, with McDonald's and Disney warning about consumer spending, uh, we're going to see a lot of fallout in the low to uh, middle class uh, demographics. Excellent. And no surprises to any of us, you're seeing a lot more rhetoric about the political landscape and using that as a justification for C-suite incompetence. Uh, oh, I was looking at it to uh, Dell's uh, latest financials. So their layoffs weren't even necessary. They're extremely profitable. They're just they're just cutting a lot of fat. So, uh, I mean, same move with Elon Musk. You know, asking for his massive pay cut, and then burning everybody and firing huge chunks of important teams. So yeah. Um, so here's uh, like the transcript of all the different companies uh, talking election rhetoric. Uh, let's see, who do we recognize here? Uh, Datadog, that's local. Um, Air Products and Chemicals. Um, so yeah, uh, a little bit reaching, but sure. Uh, I guess... Um, this is the fiduciary responsibility cop-out, I guess. Okay. All right, good to know. Uh, let's take a look at our counterparty and see what they're trading today. All right, top, top uh, mentions on the Wall Street Bets forum today include NVIDIA, Lunar, Clove, ASTS, Peloton. Uh, Wayfair, Snowflake, uh, Made, Rocket Lab, um, this is just a buzzword, The Qs, Zoom, Kava, uh, Tesla, Intel, Starbucks, Donald Trump's really dumb company, AMD, Siri, Microsoft, Apple, Meta, Line, what is Line? Amazon and Dips. I think the okay. Line is, isn't it a Line? Isn't that the dental one? Maybe. Uh, yeah yeah remember uh that was th those dental stocks were really big during lockdowns because everyone spent their stimulus money and got invisalign and dumb stuff uh, i'm wrong this is lineage yeah i don't know what this is what is lineage can we get a profile uh profile 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 what is line Real estate, it's a REIT. Oh, game over. <laughs> it's a dumb REIT. Okay. All right, anything else interesting? Uh, anything really red? Uh, Apple has more red than, no, not really. Um, 
cues doesn't look great. Yeah, it's slightly more red than positive. Um, yeah, I mean, for a red day today, it's not that bad. Okay. Well, Microsoft is down 1.8%. NVIDIA is down almost 3%. Okay, so the tech high flyers have got it. Okay. Yeah, all, all of them are red. Okay. Let's AMD is down almost 4%. Wow. Let's take a look really quick. Let's go to the weekly view. These are all the tickers that have weekly option contracts. So and if you hold the shift key, uh, or is it shift? Yeah, command, sorry. Oh, I didn't know you could zoom in like that. Oh, wait. Oh, wow. I just uh, learned something. Okay. Let's go back to the parent. Okay, so here's the weeklies view for all the 11 subsectors that make up the S&P 500. Okay, yeah, looks like all of IT is red. Holy cow. Tesla's down four. Uh, NetEase is down 12%. Baidu just had earnings. Uh, they're they're down four four five percent. Okay, all right. So nice and bearish. All right, uh, bears are feasting today. Okay. All right, let's get back to our uh, news cycle. We're a little bit short on time, so let's speed up through the the, the lesser articles. But yeah, PM uh, PMI data. This is a uh, producer manufacturing. Uh, what's the I stand for? Uh, index. So it's the it's not the consumer prices, it's producer prices. So this is a little bit um, higher up in a value chain. So uh, more manufacturing and industrial through, through, throughput focused here. So uh, this is obviously a, a big driver of jobs and GDP and everything. So having uh, this be really soft is not good. So that's our meta article number one. Uh, let's look at some more continued U.S. consumer sentiment data, courtesy of Lowe's. All right, so blah, 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 lower than expected, do-it-yourself sales, of course. And what else? Based on lower than expected, do-it-yourself sales and a pressured macroeconomic environment, the company is updating its outlook for operating results of the year 2024. Blah, blah, blah. Challenging macroeconomic backdrop, especially for the homeowner. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah, very optimistic, obviously. Okay, wonderful. And then here's the uh, the SAM, SOM room rule. Has anyone heard of this before? Uh, this indicator has, pre has predicted uh, perfectly predicted every U.S. recession recession since 1930, and what it is basically is um, here, it, here's here's the historical information. Okay, it's so, the latest economic fad that the media has come up with to sell clicks. I think Larry's on the money here. So yeah. The, the formal translation is the three-month moving average of the national unemployment rate of U3 that rises 0.5 percentage points or more relative to the minimum of the last three months average for the previous 12 months. So it's the rolling three-month average of the last 12 <laughs> for U3. And we know U3, they, 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 they are jiggering a lot. Um, we don't quite have the time to go into the exact uh, employment formula here, but uh, it is doctored to no end. So yeah, uh, here's so yeah here, here's the historical data. So yeah, if this goes up uh, three quarters, then this finally predicts a recession. Okay, but yes, uh, on, on the current scale, it's only a forty percent probability. <laughs> okay. All right, let's fast forward a little bit. Let's jump to our currency news. Oh, let's look at dollar strength really quick and see where we are, relatively speaking.
if this will load. Come on, trading view. Load the chart, please load the chart. Oh my gosh. Oh. Mm, something's wrong with this computer. Maybe I should have restarted it today. No data here yet. Why is that? Come on, buddy. All right, forget you dollar strength. We'll skip it. All right. Uh, anyway, let's talk uh, cryptos for a second. So if you look at our last couple of articles in the crypto space, a lot of the a large groups of uh, Bitcoin holders are holding uh, for the long term. And even with the Mt. Gox contingent, uh, a lot of folks are are holding on. So we might be seeing um, a, uh, a nice strong plateau forming at least. So what, what is this? Where is this chart? Okay. Uh... I am not sure how to read this. Let me back up out of this chart. Where's the other one? Oh, here we go. Okay, looking at ETF performance, uh, we know Grayscale is not the popular one with its high management fees, but everyone else is starting is seeing inflows, uh, except Bitwise at the moment. But overall, we're still seeing continued net inflows, and we might see some cannibalization due to uh, this the uh, the spin up of the Ethereum side as well. Uh, but let's see, here is institutional exposure over the top 25 hedge funds. Uh, looks like at a first glance, uh, there's what, 10, 12 holdouts of the top 25 that have not bought the ETF. Okay. And then here's Bitcoin performance by region. And ironically, the US side is performing the worst. Interesting. Uh, that's not what I expected. Okay. Um, but yeah, we'll see how this shakes up. And here's Dubai again, um, trying to make crypto a little bit more valid for day-to-day -day transactions here. But their human rights abuses against their Indian laborers is still legendary. Okay. Not much here. All right, let's go to domestic news and let's talk about the fun stuff with K Kamala Harris. All right, let me load the latest predictions items and uh, let's take a look. Come on, buddy. Okay, here's predicted. All right, presidency. Let's grab this screenshot. Uh, August 22. Okay. All right. Let's compare and contrast. Can we do this here? Okay. Yeah, we can do it here, I think. Okay. So let me zoom out a little bit. Okay. Uh, just bear with me. I'll, I'll, I'll read out the figures. All right. So this week, let's see. Who is the presidential winner compared to last week? Okay. So... This week, 53 cents to Kamala, 50 cents to Donald. Last week, it was 57 to Kamala, 46 to, to, to Donald. So it looks like uh, Donald is slightly better at the moment. And uh, what else? 
will Harris be the next U.S. president? Uh, 58 before the DNC, after the three-day insanity, uh, two cents down. <laughs> and then Trump went up two cents. Or no, no went up two cents. Okay. And then let's see, anything else interesting? Um, so RFK uh, maybe is going to... Yeah, I saw that Friday. Friday. Yeah. Oh. If he becomes attorney general, that would be amazing. You know what? You yeah, know what? all of all of them. I, I think it'd be great to bring in people and you got a six week trial. If you go kick everybody's butt, you're you're staying in the job. Hell, just just make RFK director of the CIA. Like just just let's just let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's just go full hog. All right. So uh, we'll circle back to that. But yeah, uh, her cabinet, her proposed cabinet is just Barry Obama, you know, term four, basically. Uh, but yeah, corporate tax rate hike, not going to be good for jobs. It seems like she's dedicated on destroying or let me let me correct that. Her bosses just want to destroy the, the U.S. economy. I mean, I wouldn't do anything differently. But yeah, uh, if unrealized gains get taxed, like we're oh, all going to no. be we're, we're all going to be homeless. <laughs> Except the uh, 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 unless you have large significant assets that are off the books, you know if they're shiny, if they come in a box, um, guarded by guns and locks, then maybe you have a chance. What about her price control? Yeah, oh, so that is not going to end well at all. So terrible. Uh, this is really the fall of the Roman Empire, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, Diocletian's edicts, um, and that was the fall of the eastern side on the Byzantine uh, uh, the side. But yeah, uh, and then here's amnesty for illegals. I'm just like, oh my gosh, it, oh it's just my nuts. Gosh, like, like guys, like we just got to be honest. Like the U.S. government hates us as productive taxpayers. They they are obviously trying to kill us re and replace us. And oh. money, you know, but why would what, but why do you think they want to do that? Because we're it's, ungovernable. It's, like, Wani, you're a pain yeah. in the ass. Dave's a pain yeah. in the ass. I'm a pain in the ass. Right, no, right. We, we, like, we hold the government accountable. Uh, and that's the last thing they, 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 they care need. about. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so we're going to do our part and, you know, make money and, and, and do the patriarch the patriotic thing of not paying taxes and escaping <laughs> the false thing. So okay. somebody needs to uh, turn these into numbers. You know, at, at, at a certain category of, of having houses and things like that, this is what they're going to take from you. <laughs> exactly. So you know, if they're going to be... If you have a 401k that's up half a million dollars, this is what they're going to take from you. Exactly. Exactly. I know, I know, I know. I mean, we talked about before. Cyprus, they they just jack bank accounts, uh, savings. They just oh, yeah. nationalized everyone's bank account. This has happened what, before. What, 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 what do you mean by nationalized uh, sa uh, saving account? Yeah, they bail sorry. you. They take your money. They take your money. Then no one would put their money in the bank. Then uh, well, it's too late now. <laughs> it's happened. Oh, uh, you bank Cyprus, um, they they nationalized the, the savings accounts. Nationalized savings. Uh, what year was this? Um, Two thousand ten, maybe. Uh, this this new search engine I'm playing with sucks ass. Uh, eco eco shot or something, whatever. Cyprus, come on, Cyprus, um, savings. Two thousand ten. Oh no, fifteen. Nationalized. I think it was like 12 or 13, but I can't Maybe remember. 15, yeah. Yeah. It's weird that Bing doesn't want me to find out when this... Here we go. Here we go. Finally. This is old news, if you can believe that. Uh, so this is the fallout of the uh, the pigs. There's no FDIC in short. <laughs> yeah. There's no... There, there's. There's no treasury agent here, you know, or treasury officer trying to move your money around. But yeah, so this is happening yeah, in 2013. So 13. Okay. Yeah. 
But yeah, flaunt see, as it gets see, clean. Yeah, international bank accounts aren't covered under federal depositors insurance. <laughs> so, so you mean they basically just seize your bank account? It happened. It happened. I I know. Like it's it's this not this is not ex, a power exclusive to China, and then we did the same thing to Russian assets, or we stole the Russian foreign 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 reserves, uh, on on the European side. Well, that's uh, not permanent yet. Yeah, but and, and they're collecting the interest right now, and they might have to give it back anyway. So yeah. you think that can happen in the U.S.? FDR did it during the Depression. Yeah. Yeah. He went into everybody's um, um, safe deposit boxes and yanked all the gold. And and again, a piece of paper back. Yeah. And, so the and, other obvious one is is that they they set property taxes at like five percent. New York New York's hammering people on property taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 the one two punch finish is taxing un, un unrealized gains yeah that's that's just crazy oh no no way because then every homeowner will get wiped out and then you know blackstone is just waiting at the court steps to buy your distressed real estate and then they're going to rent it out to illegals oh my god so so yeah uh so then we should not put any money in the bank should just have enough for expenses Right. Well, no, and but then, they'll come after anything. Uh, I mean, the, <clears throat> like the more hidden and portable it is, the more valuable that asset class is. So, well, maybe... if you think about it, if the foreign assets can't be identified as something that's good, they'll say that it, it's uh, money laundering. I mean, that that's mm -hmm. the trick that happens to the Brits all the time. Mm -hmm. So you don't think people will fight this if if the no backup... no we we we're gonna just no, let them. People didn't even fight COVID. We, like they, they yeah, people, people refuse to God. fight a face mask. That, like that, that's that's why you have to get ahead of this. Well, somebody needs to start creating content that says this is what it's going to cost you, and start warning people because you, you got to have a critical mass of a hundred thousand people just out of their minds angry. Pitch you know, that's not enough. Pitchforks. Even, even that's not enough. Well, uh, but to get the ball rolling, you need. A lot of people yeah. very angry. This is ridiculous how we could let the, it's, such it's things communist. happen. Yeah. It's it just, oh, beyond. Don't worry. It's okay. Things, no, things, it's not things, okay. Things will get a lot worse before they get better. Don't worry. <laughs> so what okay. do we do? What do we do? Uh, well, you, you, buy, you start, buy a little bit more gold. Buy a little bit more gold. You, you start talking about people getting assassinated. Uh huh. There's, there's always uh, the head chopper and crimes the against the you American the people, against back. humanity. Uh, so this depressing. Think about this. It's not. It's an opportunity. I mean, chaos is a ladder, right? But uh, right, right. But what? How do we seize this uh, opportunity for the chaos? Lonnie, that really you and in? I are. You and I are Asian. <laughs> if things really go bad, we don't have to be on this side of, of the Pacific Ocean. And where story. do we go? It, anywhere but here. It doesn't matter. It's the same question right. as the as the Southern Vietnamese. You can be. You can be anywhere on this planet, but you just cannot be in Saigon. You will die. You'll be murdered and raped to death. So, but if if America goes down, it takes everybody. I mean, it's everything's still dollarized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no alternate currency at this point. You know, if if America takes a huge loss, the whole world follows. And right, you know, it, right, it's back in eight years. But you know, instantaneous, you've got problems. And, and all of your investments are going to be dollarized. Right. The whole world will be affected, yeah. no matter I mean, what. It's not like we're going to buy land in uh, Ubekistan or, you know, someplace that's not affected. Argentina by... is the favorite place. What's that? Argentina. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good but, beef, though. But, but they've all got their own problems. Yeah. 
Um, any case, okay. yeah. Shut up. So, so yeah. Well, I know we're, 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 don't worry, Wani. Just, uh, just. Uh -oh. I just want to know. More just want to be prepared. Uh, guns, gold, and food is his start. Is his start. Okay. Uh, okay, next domestic item. Uh, four ditches electric SUV uh, is industry continues to backpedal. Blah, blah, blah. We talked about this to death. Uh, a little bit behind on time. We'll fast forward. Uh, again, last week we talked about Ozempic and stomach paralysis in 1 in 20. It's basically uh, kidney stones for your stomach. So, yeah. And then to, uh, what's his name? Uh, who mentioned uh, earlier? Charles Sater um, mentioned that it's... Um, the glucagon, the synthetic glucagon, is sourced from the the Gila monster, and it's a it's a venom. So the the suicide ideation kind of makes sense uh, from a pheromone perspective. <laughs> and again, no, I just read this. That would be one in twenty five or one twenty five. Yeah, yeah. Which seems like a much less number than whatever you're talking about. The Kidney stone. Yeah, that, that's separate from this, but yeah, still five percent like of people whose stomachs just stop working. Like that's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, speaking of more fun demographics, as as property owners, uh, we want to be away from violent crime rates, obviously, but uh, we need to know where they are. Okay. Uh, a lot in Alaska, ironically, New Mexico, um, the South, of course. Um, anything Montana is kind of high. Where's our Montana representative? Yeah, Rob's not here yet. Um, Illinois is not bad. That's really yeah. Struck. They might be reporting this, or this might be exclusively black on black crime, which is horrific. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know Tennessee was this bad. Like. Alaska's tripping me out here. Um, I, 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 there's that much crime there. Maine is safe. Hell, Florida looks yeah, normal. Yeah. yeah, Florida looks normal for once. That's just bizarre. And Washington D.C. Right, Maryland is looking pretty bad at 400. Uh, oh, D.C. 812. Oh my gosh, did you see this? <laughs> they wrote it in white. Uh, the graphic designer should be shot, but sure. Um, DC's really bad. Arkansas, sorry, New Mexico's number two. Arkansas's number three. <laughs> wow. Okay. Thanks, FBI. This is courtesy of 2022 data, too. Um, and I, I imagine now it's a lot worse since uh, the illegal problem is rampant. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of economic pressure. Yeah. All right. Uh, existing home sales, sluggish. Uh, oh, so let's take a look at our tradable to-dos with home sales. And that's with ITB, the Home Builders ETF. We got everything in there from Lowe's to Home Depot to paint and lumber and everything else in between. And appliances, I believe. ITB. All right. So um, ITB, like everybody else, is salivating at the thought of reduced rates. So the 10-year yield will drop temporarily with the sugar high, and um, mortgage apps will spike for two weeks, and then everything will be priced in. But um, yeah, I would I would keep an eye on ITB if you guys are trying to play um, real estate home sales. But uh, it does look a little bit sideways and uncertain at the moment. At least with, with momentum, though, there are inflows since uh, looks like early July. But it's not strong. All right, cool. Uh, let's take a look at more uh, commercial real estate funds things. And here's a, a big building in Philly. Uh, downtown Philly, it was appraised for less than 25% of its value from 2021. That's horrific. Let's see how many square feet this was. Uh, oh, it doesn't say. But it has fallen to 73% occupancy and into receivership. Holy cow. 
Um, yeah, uh, this building's net cash flow was off by about 2% from the time its loan was underwritten. I think most owners will... <laughs> okay, this is a, sorry, this is an optimistic statement on something else. Um, but yeah, uh, this, this will get a lot worse over time. And let's see, we are seeing New York, Chicago, and San Francisco offices with 70% drops from the original appraisal. Wow. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, this is a, he's saying it, it's relative. So Philly's, it's not just going to be Philly that's going to go down. It's all the coastal cities. So exciting times there. And then, yeah, here's uh, illegals will get favorable loans. Um, yeah, wonderful. All right, let's switch to tech news. We talked about Palo Alto Networks and their crisis management. Um, you know what? I for, for, for fun, I should apply this job and just report back. Maybe I should. Okay. Would I qualify? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, but my resume doesn't read well. My like my resume looks really choppy. Um, I look like a like a uh, yeah. My, my resume looks like a like I hop around too much, but that's that's partially not my fault. Like uh, the closer I got to C suite, uh, the more crazy uh, my my coworkers ended up looking. Like it's not good when a CEO is banging your boss. Uh, like that. Like that's never good, but. Um, that's happened at two firms <laughs> and uh, uh, I got caught in the crossfire and yeah, it's not good. Okay. But yeah, we don't have to worry about that. Okay. Um, switch to the next tech news. Uh, let's see. Uh, Microtrep tech had an unauthorized party that compromised certain servers and business operations. Uh, of course, let, but let's start by blaming the Russians for sure. So this is great for, um, you know, scaring the industry a little bit straight. But yeah, no surprises there. Uh, let's talk Michael Lynch for a second and look at this super yacht footage. And for a lot of us who are unfamiliar with Mike Lynch, uh, let me pull up his bio really quick. Uh, he was involved in selling, uh, I think his HP stock. Uh, uh, yeah, he sold autonomy to HP in 2011. There was a lot of fraud involved, and um, he also started Dark Trace, which is sort of like a prototype of what Palantir has become. Uh, so this guy is uh, connected with uh, was it MI5 or MI6, whichever one is the international arm, I forget. And MI6. yeah, MI6, okay. And then conveniently, uh, he died on his super yacht off of Sicily, and his business partner died concurrently in a car accident. But yeah, here's the boat, uh, 184 feet long, crew of 10. And when this went down, um, uh, all the hatches were open, which is like, like, that, like that's not what it's for. And if you know anything about water spouts, these do not form easily on the ocean. Like, how, how many times have you gone to the beach and seen a tornado? On the water. Yeah. 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 It, it, like, like, like this is statistically like really low probability. And the, Medi the, 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 the Mediterranean ocean currents are similar to California. We're almost the same latitude. So if you don't see it here, you won't really see it there. But then you look at like harp weather technology and weather warfare then things go into darker rabbit holes. But this is just a really complicated like situation. And Q Bono, which is, you know, who benefits? You know, if I'm a billionaire and I want to disappear and I maybe want to try to kill my, you know, wife, I might do it this way. <laughs> I'm not saying OJ was right, but I'll just say I understand. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, very suspicious, uh, assume the worst, and yeah, just bizarre situations here. Okay. Uh, let's go back to uh, the rest of our news. Uh, a little short on time, but uh, yeah, we'll skip uh, layoff data. Job growth, growth or sorry, jobless claims are still at 33-month highs. Uh, strikes are hitting um, 
uh, the rail system in the in Canada, um, the left hand or right hand between the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics and the Commerce Department apparently don't talk to each other, and uh, there was a funny um, uh, meme that came up here. If you guys have seen, uh, what you will call it, um, Office Space. <laughs> Obviously, the commerce secretary doesn't know what, what she's doing. And um, you got to call in the bobs to ask, so what would you say you do here? <laughs> and then this governor's former governor basically is um, the epitome of uh, the Peter principle, which is uh, you get promoted to your level of incompetence. And then hopefully the marketing director isn't Warren because he's going to commit suicide if he sees all these shenanigans in the workplace. <laughs> or burn it down. Well, one of the two. But yeah, so what happened was, yeah, uh, at a press conference, she replied um, when talked when asked about uh, the revision, she said, I am not familiar with that. <laughs> uh, wonderful. All right. Good times there. Um, but yeah, we'll skip uh, this bullshit uh, uh, E3 fix here. Or was it U3? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's get to international news. Um, as we talked about in the highlight reel, uh, American assets are being deployed into Ukrainian uh, territories and uh, kind of hard to, to hide it now that the, the captured forces uh, are being detained. So that's optimistic. Uh, MPOX, meanwhile, uh, lockdowns are not likely just yet. Um, just China's, yet. <laughs> just yet, yeah. So it's it's not the right timing yet. But yeah, uh, I'll, I'll keep you guys posted, obviously. Um, uh, the UK is running out of liquefi liquefied natural gas, among other things. And uh, it's going to be a difficult winter for them. And again, Putin is still honoring his contracts. And a lot of gas and fuel is still flowing from the east to the west uh, through the traditional uh, overland uh, service pipes. But that situation can change quickly. And I thought this is kind of sad. Uh, if you guys have followed the uh, UK fiascos at all, um, this came out recently. Um, and for my fellow white homeboys, you guys can't say anything, so I will. This is hella fucked up and racist as, as, as a motherfucker. So I'll say it, right? But yeah, uh, like, you know, uh, the UK has lost their mind. Um, it, yeah. it's, it, it, you know, besides great Indian food, like, I don't know a single reason to, to visit the UK. Um, it's ridiculous. You know, ha most of these policies are, uh, BLM and rainbow is, is highly hateful. It I mean, really yeah. is. Uh, it all is. The time. You start looking at what the words are on individual. Yeah. It's scary. And, and, the, and. And, and like with. and like the Rotterdam rapes have been going on since the 1970s. Like, there's no reason for this. Like, just shoot them. Like, I don't know what else to say. And if you don't have guns in England, get creative. Like, yeah, like, come on, guys. But yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh diamonds are cheap. Um, no surprises there. Um, and let's look at green cards. All right, where do most of the green cards come from? Uh, Mexico, India, China, the DR, Cuba, the Philippines, El Salvador, Vietnam, Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, Honduras, Guatemala, Jamaica, and South Korea. Um, this would be funny to divide applications by GDP contribution. <laughs> and then this would flip, right? It would be like the Koreans, the Chinese, and the Indians. And then the Philippines somewhere in the middle. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ukraine would be on my list. Ukraine. I was guessing. Uh, Ukraine. Uh, actually, that is not as so that that's a good hypothesis. But ironically, the women left and the men got stuck and conscripted. So the per capita heavy hitters are still stuck or dead in the Ukraine. Ironically, and the women are traditional war brides and found new suitors. Like that is the grim reality. Well, I'm trying to think how it takes six months after being married to a an American to get a green card. So I mean that's a giant number. 
uh, and it uh, does matter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then Russia has a a, a new um, amnesty, new amnesty deal. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. <clears throat> So Putin has opened up a sort of ideo ideological asylum. So for those who dislike the Western global homo traditions, <laughs> holy shit, um, he is basically allowing a special visa an applicant, uh, a, a visa application to to immigrate to Russia. Um, it, it's kind of wild. Um, um, so yeah, uh, I'll drop that in the chat. Okay, fun times. Uh, let's talk uh, uranium for a second. This is kind of waking up. And for a lot of our fellow CCJ holders, we've been waiting forever. It's been quite the boring asset class as a while, but um, yeah. Uh, a little bit out of time here. All right, let's talk gold and silver since that's been blowing up. All right, gold right now, 2482, silver 2897. Gold silver ratio is about 86. And we saw it as high as almost 90 on my birthday. Yay. Okay. And then after that, it's been ticking down a little bit. So yeah, effectively, you're gonna have one ounce of gold by about 85 ounces of silver. And relatively speaking, silver is still really, really cheap. Uh my own sell signal isn't until like the gold silver ratio hits at least under 20. So yeah, maybe 10 even. So yeah, we'll see. But under yeah. 20? Yeah. Tw like 20 to one. So one ounce of gold buys 20 ounces of silver. Tw 20 to one. That's not gonna happen. You wanna bet, Dave? You wanna bet? 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 Shut up or put up. You wanna bet? Yes or no? <laughs> All right. Okay. Bet, bet. Whatever. All right. Uh, but yeah, we'll see it. We'll see it happen. Give it some time, Dave. All right. But yeah, historically, we saw this peak around COVID. So uh, it got as high as 120. But premium sky skyrocketed at 122. So the best trade was probably when I did it at 100. Okay. Cool. And then due to the high gold valuation, um, certain larger bars are now worth a million dollars. So a 400 wow. ounce bar. Uh, what's wow. 400 divided by 16? How many pounds is that? A 25 pound gold bar is worth a mil. So wow. yeah, uh, and people, We'll stick that up their butt and try to get on airplane <laughs> with it. Um, but yeah, Troy ounces are bigger, so that's oh okay. right, right. So right. somewhere around there, yeah. So about twenty pounds then. So yeah. hey, hey Warren, I have a question about mm -hmm. like how to store uh your gold and silver, like a safety box if you want to store it in your house. What do you do? Well, number one, you don't tell anybody. Uh, number two, uh, you, you diversify it. So, um, you spread it out and then right, the best right. way to, the best way to hide it is in plain sight. In plain sight. And if you don't have a dummy safe at your home, you should have one. You need the yeah, real one that's hidden like very well. And then you need a dummy one that's kind of hidden reasonably well, has about $5,000 in small bills, maybe a disposable handgun and, so when you get robbed and they pull, they, they 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 stick a gun next to your head, you have to open up something. You open up the ah. dummy safe. You play dumb. You cry, ah. and, then, and then they run away. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what kind of safety box? I mean, the the safe. What what kind to buy? Or do uh, you know of anyone? <laughs> Whatever you want to buy. It's 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 a it's a very easy answer. Look what you like. We should talk offline, but look at what you want to buy. Okay. And then, and then go to this guy's channel, Lock Picking Lawyer. And if yeah. he can defeat okay. whatever you're going to buy, don't buy it. And he publishes videos mm -hmm. on how he defeats yeah. everything. Okay. Um, He's great. Yeah. So there's, there's a lot of things that they can just be opened. It's great. 
Yeah. Because it, it comes into effect for gun safes and lots of other things yeah. too. So uh with 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 enough time or explosives, every safe can be defeated. Um, and if I can't open it at your house and I'm robbing you, I'll just take it with me. So if it's not bolted right, down, right. yeah. Right. You want something that uh no one can like take it out of your house, right? Yeah. Something super heavy. So like ironically, like my main gun safe, like my main large gun safe is empty <laughs> or it doesn't have the valuables you, you, that you actually think would be in there because mm -hmm. that's too obvious. Like you open it up, it's ammo. Like, yeah, it's valuable, but it's but it's but it's but it's not my goal and shit. So mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of ways to do this. But yeah, just talk to me. We could be creative. And again, you need to not tell people like how you set this up. Mm hmm. Because people will kill and shoot you for it. Um, yeah. Okay. Wow. Fun stuff there. Okay. Let's go to China stuff. The fun stuff. And then we'll call it a day here. All right. The China stock market has still not survived. And it's still below its 3,000 uh, key psychological uh, price level here. And as you can see on the larger scale, the stock market has gone nowhere for 15 years. Because Beijing and Shanghai commies have been robbing the whole country for for cash for cash money. It's been a giant shakedown since uh, Nixon was there. Okay, so that's the stock market, and let's take a quick glance at the RMB conversion rate really quick. Oh, let's look at the Japanese one too. While we're at it, all right, let's take a look. Okay, so Jap, so let's look at China. Uh, so looks like uh, deflationary pressures have continued to maintain, and no amount of M two money printing is going to really fix this. Uh, so Beijing's really fucked. So this was seven point two; it's dropped down to seven point one and change. So holy shit! Switching to the Japanese, uh, we're at what one forty six. So it's a lot better, but. Um, it's not the extreme of 161, but 140 is like these are like people are still going to starve to death in Japan. All right. OK, uh, let's talk COVID really quick. So there's been some more reports and social media stuff of uh, COVID issues in China. And to me, this is just an excuse for government suppression of civil unrest. It's not really about COVID, of course. Um, so we'll keep our eye on that. But yeah, what I'm not seeing in China is monkeypox. So uh, once that flares up, then I'll be a little bit concerned. But um, I'm watching out for all the same telltale signs from 2019. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how that shakes up. Um, but yeah, meanwhile, on the uh, around the uh, South China Seas, there's still a lot of beef between the, the Chinese Coast Guard and uh, Filipino uh, vessels. So that's kind of crazy. And speaking of the Philippines, a uh, a mayor has fled the Philippines and in a very mysterious fashion, no less. Um, so less. So yes, let me fast forward a little bit. Uh, she allowed human trafficking syndicates and um, scam centers uh, to operate in her district. And her own Chinese uh, heritage is quite questionable. <laughs> and if you know anything about Filipinos, um, like being Chinese, is known like it's a it's a it's an aristocratic mark of nobility because supposedly you're richer and you're more mm -hmm. fair-skinned and having fair skin features in minority countries or in colored countries is a, is a, is a, is, a, is is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then she skipped town in a very interesting way. So she left illegally without border checks. Uh, so she got off on a boat or something, or it was a helicopter. So this overlaps the uh, the, the the prime minister uh, or the second gen prime minister of uh, Bangladesh, like whatever her name is. So kind of interesting parallel, but yeah. And uh, yeah, this is her. Um, she would be considered quite beautiful and for, for being this light skinned in the Philippines, but yeah. Uh, most Filipinos do not look like this, but yeah, she is a full-on commie spy. 
So yeah, thanks Philippines. You guys are fucking everything up. Okay. But yeah, other than that, uh, China is in massive chaos. I don't know where to begin. Uh, everything is worse than ever. Uh, civil servants aren't paying paid. The entire banking sector has to pay back their wages. Like That is not a mark of strength. And the reason the Bangladesh issue was so bad was youth unemployment there exploded beyond 20%. And then they started killing and raping Hindu women, which is the ethnic cleansing uh, might... The, the, they're the minority targets for all that ethnic cleansing. So Xi Jinping is uh, is a very close ally with uh, Bangladesh. So uh, he was um, hiding for three weeks. Uh, and he recently just came out of his shell to record a video. So um, yeah, China is paying a lot of attention to their neighbors. But yeah, okay. And what else is good? Um, yeah, as, as we'll talk about COVID, where it did. Um, there's more. The tariffs have been reduced for Tesla China for Chinese source Teslas, but um, they're still holding true for the Li Auto stuff and the BYD uh, equivalents. And as promised earlier, here is a potential future of China. Like they have to pick which crash landing. And so here's a reality for Japanese locals who cannot get out of the way of the currency risk because they're not, you know, the 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 the, the forex trading, uh, you know, housewives club. But yeah, um, for English teachers stuck there, like this guy, he's starving to death, eats one meal a day. His Japanese girlfriend wants to get married, and he's like, uh, "I'm sorry, honey, I can't even pay for the train fare for a date today." Like, yeah, so uh, that's serious localized currency risk. And so that's one potential reality for China. And the, the, here's, the, here's the other side of the, of, of the spectrum. The Venezuelan plan. Shout outs to uh, 2016 and 2017, if you guys remember this. Um, Venezuelans as a group collectively lost 24 pounds in body weight. <laughs> Oh my god. They don't god. need Ozempic then. I know. Just just go to Venezuela. And like Yeah, just like, have people staff. I don't think Venezuelan women can lose 24 pounds. You know, if you only weigh 120 and you lose, you know, another 24 pounds, like, you know, there goes your the ass and the tits and everything. And and you could you like, you know, you you you're going to have like uh like if you lose that much weight that fast, like you could you're like you'll go into like menopause practically. You'll your periods will stop. Um, you'll be anemic. It's going to be a nightmare. But yeah, uh, and I, I, like this sounds terrifying, but mass graves and famine is maybe a handful of years away for most of the Chinese stuck in China. Uh, I, I would be terrified to live in China because 60% of the population is urbanized and everyone's really far away from food production. And you know China has enough problems with like fake foods and whatnot. And these are the good times, relatively speaking. Like wait, like wait till there's warfare with the U.S. and everything else, and real troops on the streets. Um, you know the lockdowns are just an audition. And most people, you know, when 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 the local CCP officials came to weld in you know apartment gates shut, most people just took it and starved to death. Like. I, like that, like that's wow. not good for anybody. So, yeah. so twenty percent mostly starvation is how you end the socialism. Mass graves mm -hmm. and starvation. Like, I mean, literally, like, it, it's a trend line. You can draw it yeah. through a lot of countries because you can vote your way into tyranny, but there's only one. There's only one way out of tyranny, which is to shoot your way out. You can ask the Cambodians. You know, anyone. You know, it, it, like guns are going to be involved. So, yeah. So it's starvation, famine. Yeah, take your pick. Take your pick. Machetes. The machete club. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And we talked about before, China banned uh, the purchase of chef knives and stuff. You have to report that to the local really? police. We talked about it. Yeah. We talked about oh. this last year. Remember, oh. like, I, I bring the cutting edge Chinese intel to you guys. Like, it it's so saturated now because there's so much of it. But um, yeah, 
that, that's because they, they they're afraid people will use it against the government one hundred percent to fight back. why do you think why do you think commies Yeah. ban guns like commies do a, couple, a handful of things the first three things they do ban firearms seize control of the courts Right. and seize control of the media and then seize Right. control of of, of the currency Right. or crash it yeah But, but what can you do? How can you fight the government with just the knives? That's almost like impossible. you don't and then there's a chinese proverb Yeah. you know of the 36 ways to handle trouble the best one is to leave Right. so i i mean some of them are smart and heading to san diego i, I don't think that's the right uh move i mean a, a lot of chinese nationals are moving to thailand and vietnam and and foxconn is there so that, that that's not as insane as it sounds So yeah, lots of optimistic news. Uh, let's end this session with uh, a quick poll <laughs> and let's redo our earlier poll and let's see if uh, today's sentiment has changed after the last two hours. All right. And we don't have a lot in earnings today, but uh, let me pull up the list really quick for us. Uh, what is it today? Oh, no, this is the old one. Okay. You have a Kava. Yeah, Kava. Workday, Rost. Yeah, there we go. Kava, uh, Intuit, Bill.com, Intuit. which is Mm right -hmm. in San, San Mateo. And then we have Hafina tomorrow. I don't know what that is. Wait, Opera was yesterday? Opera is public? Wow, Or everyone opera. in there... Opera is a is a is an internet browser. It's actually really good. Um, Oh. uh, yeah, I, I I like you know before I had to do a lot of browser testing, so I I play with all the browsers. But yeah, I I think it used to be on IBD's list for a while. Oh. Who owns it? Who owns Opera? The stockholders. <laughs> it's public. I know which what company it Opera. oh okay opera okay It's a web browser. It's actually really not robust. Uh, it has a really nice uh, tab grouping system. Um, I am getting really upset at Brave, so I, I've been trying to rotate out of this, but yeah. but they're all based on chromium Yeah. i mean i Right. i, I think there's one that isn't Oh, it's Norwegian. Okay, that's cool. oh Tall, lanky mofos. Um All those Vikings, the Dutch, everybody, uh, they're freaking giants. I'm average height there, if you can believe that. It's ridiculous. But yeah, let's cut I have up. it on myself just to have another independent browser. Yeah, yeah, it's really handy. So yeah, this is uh, their performance. Um, IBD Darling. Um, oh, oh, I could see why. Cup and handle, right? Cup and handle. Uh, I mean, where's the handle? But Yeah. It, it was a while ago when I saw it, maybe like 12 months ago. Not, not... Yeah. I think yeah, on 12 months I like this is this is like a beautiful, you know, uh this is this this side is nice, but I guess this is the handle. But then you or this is the handle. I don't know. It's like it depends on our rule set. Technically it's not really fulfilling classic handle formation, but uh yeah. But when you trade earnings, uh, technical 